Welcome to Live Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. The nature of the spirit versus the flesh is the title of this devotion. You see, there is a characterization, a, a fragrance, a attitude, a knowing that comes from the Holy Spirit. And there is that character, characterization, nature, knowing, fragrance that comes from the flesh. And these two are different. And this is what I would like to talk to you about today. You see, it says here in John chapter 1, verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, friends, Jesus showed us the characterization and the nature, the fragrance, the life of the Spirit in the flesh. It says here in verse 18 of the same chapter, For no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Jesus, who came forth out of the intimate presence of the Father in flesh and blood, in that flesh and blood revealed the nature, characterization of the Spirit of the Father. It says in Colossians 1 verse 9 that it pleased God that in Him the fullness of the Godhead would dwell bodily. Bodily. So in other words, we see in the flesh the perfect characterization of the invisible God. Jesus is the visible expression of the invisible God. I mean, it, it says it phenomenally beautifully here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He, Jesus, is the sole expression of the glory of God. He's the light being, the outraying, the radiance of the divine. He is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by His mighty word of power, when He had by offering Himself accomplished the cleansing of our sins and riddance of guilt, He sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. All of this is a characterization of God. There in Colossians 2 verse 9, it says, For He, for in Him, in Jesus, the whole fullness of the deity, the God had continues to dwell in bodily form, giving a complete expression of the divine nature. You see, the fragrance, the nature, the characterization that came from Jesus was the spirit life. You could not smell the flesh because there was a fragrance of heaven in him, on him, in him, on him. There was a fragrance of divinity. There was a sweetness, God is love. There was kindness, a goodness, God is good. There was a mercy, God is mercy. Everything that manifested and came from Him was the life of the Spirit. And you could not taste in Him the nature of the flesh in its corruption, in its lowness. And here in Galatians chapter 5, it shows you and me, and I'll read it to you beginning in chapter 5 or 16 from the Amplified. So I say to you, walk, live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit, because then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, that human nature without God. You see, the flesh, you see, the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit, and the desires of the Holy Spirit are opposed to the flesh, godless human nature. <clears throat> For these are antagonistic to each other, 
continually withstanding and in conflict with each other so that you're not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. If you are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, then you will see that the law of God is not opposed to you. No. Now, the doings and practices, the nature, the characterization of the flesh are obvious. They are immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill temper, selfishness, divisions, dissensions, party spirit, factions, sex and, and, and peculiar opinions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. And I warn you beforehand that just as I did previously, that you realize that those living in such a way are not expressing the kingdom of God and will not see it therefore. But if you bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fragrance, the characterization of the Holy Spirit, you will begin to experience the Father's love and joy and gladness, peace and patience and e even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint. You see, people that live with this divine nature, there's no charge against them. There's no law against them because those of us who belong to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, are crucified with him. Our flesh nature, our godless human nature, with all of its passions, appetites, and desires, is crucified with Christ. And we now live by his Holy Spirit. And all of us who now live by his Holy Spirit, let's live every day, walk by the Spirit. For if by the Holy Spirit, we have our life in God, then let's go forward walking in line and conducting and controlled by His Holy Spirit. Let's live that way. <laughs> you see, friends, the characterization, the embodiment of the Holy Spirit is clear and obvious in its character and nature as is the characterization and embodiment of just the mere flesh without God's Holy Spirit. When we are without the Holy Spirit, then there is a characterization that does not represent God. The love is not that love that comes from God. It's a love that's self-serving. It's not self-sacrificing. It's not that joy in fellowship with the Father, but it's the joy in pleasure. <laughs> it's not that peace that surpasses all understanding in our communion with God. It's the peace of the absence of agitation and frustration. It's not the kindness, the benevolent of an unselfish heart, but it's the kindness to deceive and obtain whatever you desire. And on and on and on. You see, there's a fragrance, there's a characterization, there is a nature that is obvious of the flesh that does not have the Holy Spirit of God in it. And there is a characterization for those who live filled with the Holy Spirit, controlled by the Holy Spirit, that begin to express this love, this love, this joy, this gladness, this peace, this patience, this even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint. Where your flesh nature, you could feel it. Ooh, I don't like that feeling. It's trying to pull me into, no. And you feel this holy, heavenly nature keeping you, upholding you, and protecting you. And I plead with you this day that you may so live by the Holy Spirit's control and power that your whole body is filled and flooded with God and that you, your whole body, is presented to God a living, well-pleasing sacrifice, holy and acceptable to Him and that this is your reasonable service. This is your worship, that your body 
is constantly filled with the Holy Spirit and offered to God in love and peace and joy and kindness, gentleness, and all of these characterizations I've read to you here from Galatians 5.22. Friends, you need to see that your service to God that has been made possible by you having been cleansed and being continuously cleansed by His blood is that your body is filled and flooded with Him continuously until you have the richest measure of His divine presence and express that presence in your flesh by the love that manifests, the unselfish benevolent kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control and faithfulness and peace and all these attributes characterizations of the Holy Spirit are clothing you, are guarding you and keeping you and granting you to be a living witness of the love of your Heavenly Father. I think that's what Jesus meant when He said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Have a good day.